a, a fun, busy week. So I'm excited to be here. I made it to Sunday. Who else is happy they made it to Sunday? Is God good? God good. We made it to Sunday. Who knows? Maybe we're hoping, hoping for tomorrow, but it's not promised. I don't typically um, do this on a Sunday, but I just feel in my heart that uh, I want to I pray real quick for specifically people who are ill. Um, I, I just, if you guys want to bow your heads with me, I just, I feel uh, um, prompted to, to pray for healing, for sickness. Jesus, you are the healer. You are the loving Father who gave your life to restore our sinful nature, and you also gave your life to bring heaven to earth, Lord. And we pray that, the, that your presence and your healing power would just be with anyone who is under the weather, who is ill, who is terminal, Lord. We pray for your healing, whether it's through a miraculous touch, the hands of a doctor, or through eternity with you, Lord. We pray for healing and peace in, uh, in the ill right now, whether it's just a cough or, or if it's something much, much greater and, and more grave than that, Lord, we just pray for healing in our, in not just our region and our land, but in, the, in our world. We pray against sickness, Jesus. In your name, amen. Thank you for, uh, for giving me that, that moment. Last week, last week we talked through the feeding of the 4,000 in Mark chapter 8. We're not in a series right now. So I'm a little like, a little bit of a wild card. Nah, not too bad. It's just fun. I, it, it hardly ever do I get to just like pray through and teach something that just comes to me in a devotional time, um, which is really fun, but it's also a little intimidating because you guys are going to get a little window into my devotion time, and I'm excited for that. But if you have your, if you have your Bibles or if you have your, your app on your phone, we're going to be in the book of John, chapter 2 today. We're going to be looking at Jesus' first miracle. That's where we're going to start today. And we're also going to parallel it to Acts, chapter 2, which is the founding of the church, the first church service. So we're going to look at Jesus' first miracle and the first church. And I've been, I've been, I grew up in the church, I've, my, my dad's a pastor, so I've been around church a lot. And if you've been in, around, or at church, you have probably heard a teaching, a sermon on water to wine. Anyone, anyone know, know that story, familiar with that passage? You've been to church, you've been around church, you've heard someone teach on that. And usually when I hear that story, when I hear that passage, the big themes, the big takeaways, the transferable concepts that I receive from it are that Jesus was invited, that Jesus was there to do the miracle because he was invited to the wedding. Or I, I see the thing like the best is yet to come, that, that Jesus turned the water into wine and the, the director of ceremony said, this is the best wine. Usually people serve the, the cheap stuff last, but this is the best. So I also see that concept of when our life is in Jesus, the best is yet to come. It's only upward with Jesus, right? And so I'm very familiar with this, and I've kind of gotten to a, a rut where if I've heard it, I kind of skim it, and I think I have all of the details. But the Holy Spirit is so good, and the Word is so living and active that when you really read it again, it can become new every time. And so I was reading this story, reading this passage, and something new jumped out at me. And it was something so small. And so I wanted to, to teach on that topic today of keep it simple. So our, our topic today are, is keep it simple. So if you're taking notes, we got, that's our title today is keep it simple. And if you're anything like me, pray God, you're better than me. You overcomplicate things that don't need to be difficult. Anyone else make things difficult when they don't need to be? You complicate things. I am very, very good at that. I make things really difficult, or it's a really small something, and you make a mountain out of a molehill. I, I do that too. I do that too. Sometimes I'm, I'm really good at finding something really small and putting a magnifying glass on it and saying, that's huge. That's gigantic. Or I, I'm, not, I'm not blessed and gifted in mathematics or grammar. I'm just not. God didn't give me those... I mean, didn't give me those makeups, or maybe my lack of studying didn't give me those makeups. Either way, either way, I'm not good at math, and I'm not good at grammar. Um, so what do I do? 
I use spell check and a calculator. Come on, it's 2021, guys. No, I overcomplicate it. I'm so worried when I'm writing a sentence that I'm not using the right punctuation or the right letters and spelling that I put too many in there. I put too many commas. I have, I'm so worried about a run-on sentence that I don't have a proper sentence because I put too much in there. I overcomplicate the sentence. Or I carry too many ones because long division is hard. Anyone carry too many ones? Like you carried an 11 instead of a 1? That's what I do. That's how I get the wrong answer all the time. I make it more difficult than it really is. I make it way more difficult and overcomplicate things. But when I remember to keep it simple, things go a lot smoother. And so I got to think of how much more in my spiritual life, how much more in my relationship with Jesus, in my, in my relationship with friends, my family, how much do I overcomplicate my life? Because I'm either insecure in an area, and so I, I put a magnifying glass on things, or I'm arrogant in an area and nothing can live up to it. And I overcomplicate my relationships. I overcomplicate my relationship with God. How much do we do this in our lives? When, it, when you really boil it down, it's simple. It can be very, very simple. And I thank God that Jesus removes hurdles in our, in our path. He removes obstacles to simplify our lives, to, to, make, to make salvation accessible. He simplified the process by being our sacrificial offering. He made it simple for us to find and follow God. And so we see in uh, John 2, verses 1 through 11, the next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' his mother was there, and Jesus and his disciple, disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' his mother told him, they have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not my problem. It's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. That's a lot. That's a lot. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign in Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. So I, I want to pull out three principles or concepts that we can apply to our lives. Because I, I believe that if Sunday doesn't change our Monday, it's not doing its job. If Sunday doesn't change Monday, we're, doing, we're missing the mark. So what are some, some things that we can apply to our lives from this passage? Well, our first point is that bold faith moves Jesus. Bold faith moves Jesus. I still have a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that my faith can move Jesus. It can, it can set it up so that Jesus can move in my life. And also my lack of faith can prevent Jesus. I mean, that, that, that's pretty big. I mean, it's pretty simple in concept. It's simple in understanding, but it's pretty big in our daily walk. Bold faith. See, I love when you go back and you look at uh, verse 5. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. That's bold Jesus is like, hey, it's not my problem. We're, we're just here to celebrate. And she's like, nope, do what he says. She knew that Jesus was the answer. She had bold faith. Now, maybe, I mean, she is his mom, so she can tell him what to do. But she just like, she just stepped out and said, well, we're going to solve it. It's not my problem, but you're going to solve it. You're the answer to the problem, even if it's not your problem. And what's really crazy to me is that 
Mary had known that Jesus was the Son of God for 30 years. But this was the first miracle he had ever done. She was waiting for 30 years to see the glory that she was promised in the Christmas story. Unless you, I mean, maybe, I, it's not in the text, so I can only infer, maybe he was doing, like, miracles at home. Like, they'd run out of salt, and he'd be like, I got some more salt, Mom. You'd, I don't know, it's not in the text. But Mary knew who Jesus was, and Mary knew that the answer is always only Jesus. Amen. <laughs> always only Jesus. Mary knew that, and her faith in that fact moved Jesus to his first miracle. The bold faith. And when you talk about bold faith and you read the Bible, it's all you see. It's all you see. When God shows up, it's bold faith. A Abram, stepping out, bold faith to follow God. Daniel in the lion's den, bold faith to follow God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, bold faith. The lady who reached out and touched Jesus' cloak, bold faith. The centurion who said, just say the word. You don't even have to come heal just say it and it will be done. Bold faith. And this is when, when our faith is bold and set, we see Jesus show up. And so it begs the question in my own life, if I don't feel like I'm seeing God move in my life, do I have the faith that he is and will? If you don't feel like God is moving in your life, do you believe he is? Do you believe he will? Do you believe he can? Because our, when our faith is bold, his faithfulness is seen. So paralleling this to, so that's Jesus' first miracle. And I, this, uh, this is so cool because it's, it's taken two of my favorite things. Like Jesus doing miracles and the birth of the church. And so the first miracle and the first church have so many parallels here. See, the bold faith in Acts 2.14 is... Now, a now, quick little uh, backstory on this. This is very, very shortly after Jesus was crucified. This was when the disciples were scared and locked away in a room. During the Pentecost, when there's a bunch of other people around, and they're being mocked for how they were acting when the Holy Spirit descended on them. At, the, at Pentecost. So that's the setting. Then Peter stepped forward with 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. He's, what, what he's saying isn't as important as the fact that he stood up boldly and started to say it. His faith, his faith in bold action launched the church in that moment. There had never been a, a church of the way. There had never been a church following Jesus. There had been a Jewish temple, and there had been other religions or practices, but that was the first, the first gathering and, and public declaration of following Jesus in a, in, a, in a communal setting. The birth of the church happened right there because Peter had the faith and the boldness to step up and say, listen carefully. Mary had the boldness to say, Jesus is the answer to this problem. I would love to have that kind of bold faith. And I pray that we can have that. And it doesn't have to look the same. Your faith can be bold and quiet. I know lots of prayer warriors who pray for people that don't even know they're being prayed for. That's bold faith. To pray for someone when they can't ever thank you but you have faith that God loves them enough to pray for them, you can have bold faith that is just being polite. Just being nice. Showing the light of Jesus through the way you interact with other humans at the grocery store can be an act of bold faith. Because you know you're doing it for the kingdom of God and from salvation. Bold faith can have many different expressions. And then it leads us to our second point, which is Simple is powerful. Simple is powerful. This is the thing, this is the, this is the one sentence that jumped out at me from this passage in, in John 2 that 
changed the way I looked at this story. So the servants followed his instructions. I don't know if it gets much more simple than that. The servants followed his instructions. Jesus had them do something, and they did it. I can do that. Can you do that? I can do that. I mean, I can do Legos. There's instructions, and I follow the instructions. I, I, can, I can build something because it has instructions. Ikea, thank you. Give me instructions. Because I can do it when there's something that, when Jesus tells me to do something, I can do it. And what's really, really simple about Jesus' instructions, one, we all have access to them. The Bible. And two, Jesus himself boils this down into a simple sentence. Love God, love people. It doesn't get more simple than that. But how powerful is loving God and loving people? If you're loving God and you're loving people in your life, how powerful can that be for your family? How powerful can that be in your friendships? If you genuinely love people and you genuinely love God, you can conquer any enemy. You're not going to shout someone to salvation, but you can love them to the Father. It's so simple. I mean, there's just... How do I, how do I say this? Going back to overcomplicating things. I've done a very good job in my 10 years of pastoring of overcomplicating this, loving God and loving people. I think we do a very good job about making things more difficult than they need to be. I love light shows and smoke machines. But you don't need those to have a church service. You don't need those. It's simple. Just love God and love people. I need to accept that Jesus... Is, is calling me to something that's simple. What's Jesus calling you to? You all have a purpose. You all have a reason to be here because you're all made in the image of God. Are we overcomplicating our calling? What God is calling us to, do we make it more difficult because we want to see through human eyes? You see, if you go back to the wedding, they were looking at it through human eyes. We're out of wine, and those are jugs of water. But when they just did what Jesus asked, Jesus did what Jesus does. Miracles in your life. In Acts 2.42, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles, their teachings and fellowship and sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and a prayer. You see, the church was founded on these four simple things. Four simple principles is what the church was founded on. You, you, you see teaching, the word, teaching, the gospel. You see fellowship, hanging out together, being in community, being friends. Then you see sharing in meals, eating pancakes, getting hot dogs, right? You see, you see the simplicity of, of, of God's plan and prayer. Those four things are what the church was founded on. I can't beat it. No one can beat it. Because God's moving in that. God's moving in community. God's moving in meals. God's moving in prayer. God's moving in teaching of the gospel. That's, it's simple. We love God. We love people. We hang out. We break bread. And we pray for each other. Why do we make it so difficult? We see, in, in this story, 3,000, they, they went from zero to a mega church in a day with this plan. I'm sorry, I'm not going to a TED Talk, I'm going to the Bible. Like, the simplicity is what's powerful. And you know where all of this led? The bold faith, 
the, the following of the, the simple following of instructions, it led to God's glory being revealed. I want to see God's glory revealed in my life. I want to see the glory of God evident in my daily life. And I believe you do too. I believe that you, if you are here, I believe you want to see the evidence of God in your life. This was the first time, the first time that Jesus revealed his glory. And I love that this miracle wasn't something, something huge and crazy. Like, it wasn't a life-changing miracle. It was a party-changing miracle. It was, a, it was an event-changing miracle. It wasn't someone who was blind and now could see. It wasn't someone who, was, who couldn't walk and now could walk. He didn't, his first miracle wasn't raising the dead to life or feeding the 5,000. It was just helping out something simple. But his glory was revealed in it nonetheless. So God's glory in our life doesn't have to be some big, grand, crazy, life-changing event. It, it is. It can be. We see that as well. But it can also be in the daily small things, the simple parts of life, where his glory is revealed in your patience and your temper being calmed in a high-stress situation. could look like that. God's glory can be revealed in the small things. And that, going back to Luke 11, 27, which is love God and love people, you can't, can't overcomplicate that, and you will see more God in that than anything else in your life. If you understand how to love God and how to love people, you, will, you won't be able to turn around without seeing the presence of God, the evidence of God in your life. I was explaining, I was exp trying to explain this to my son. He's almost four. Next week he'll be four. I was trying to explain the, the, the spiritual, like you can't see God, but you, can, you know that God's moving in your life. And, try, and I just remembered a simple analogy. You can feel the wind, and you can see the effects of the wind, but you can't really see the wind. Well, well when you see the, the, the Holy Spirit moving in your life, it's like that. You can see the effects of the Holy Spirit moving in your life. You can feel the presence of God moving in your life. Are we seeing, are we, do we even have an eye to see God move in our life? Are we so complicated that we're, we can't even open our eyes and see it. I pray that we have an eye for miracles this week. The small things, the simple things in our lives. We can see the, the presence of God in our lives. And it starts by the gospel. Sharing meals, fellowship, and prayer. That's one of the reasons why we have pancakes. We want to share meals together. This is, our, this is our methodology because this is the birth of the church. Pancakes are great, but it's really the, the time spent with the people eating the pancakes that's more important. So I pray that, that we go bold and simple this week. If you want to bow your heads, I want to, I want to pray over us and... and uh, Jesus, thank you so much for your life. That you, that you are there in the small things. You're there in the big things. And Lord, you, you've made a simple instruction for us. Lord, I pray that we can, we can follow these simple instructions to the best of our abilities. Lord, that we can love you more each day. And we can love people more each day. And Jesus, I want to give a moment for anyone who doesn't have a personal relationship with you, that they can make it as simple as ABC, that they acknowledge that they're a sinner in need of a Savior. They believe that Jesus is the Son of God who paid their debt and then commit their life to follow Jesus. If that's you and you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you would like that, I would just ask that you would privately look up at me and raise your hand. We would pray for you and pray with you. Or if you would like to commit to the simple.
this week in, in, your, in your prayer time right now, just commit to being simple and just say, Jesus, help me. Help me see your instructions. Help me keep it simple. Just love you and love others. And as we, as we get to one, one last song of response and prayer, um, we're going to have a prayer team in the back and the, at the Hope Door. If you'd like some prayer, um, we have some, a prayer team here that would love to pray with you during this song. And um, just keep it simple. And if you want to rise with me and, and sing one last song with us, Savannah's going to lead us to the band. Amen. <laughs>